Only the hard and strong may call themselves Spartans. Only the hard. Only the strong. Spartans! What is your profession? could win 10 games in a season, it's pretty successful. The main goal for this program is to see at least five championships. Um, with that, that means that our reputation is remaining in stellar intact, that we're continuing to get kids out of here because they have good character, they have good grades, and they're representing Sparta and their family well. You know, um, seeing young men taking their education serious, seeing them take their behavior serious, and understanding that when they do that, it shows up posit positively on the field. It shows up positively in their lives. Uh, five to 10 years from now, I expect to have even some state championships over there. And um, a huge following of young men who want to be called the Spartans. Football's a game that tests. Uh, 13 weeks is a long time to get along with some people, especially being a group of boys. <laughs> um, so it's for sure something that it forces you to go. You have no choice but to go. This year's team created a legacy because everyone counted us up. We obviously knew we were going to win the Foja game, but no one thought we were going to win like that. Class of 2020 definitely left a legacy for our football program because we showed the underclassmen what the standard is, you know? Because the standard was different when I came in. The standard was 6-4. and four. Now we set the bar, so you got to win the legacy game. If you don't make it to the semifinals in the CIF, then you're not a great team. And that's what a lot of the coaching standards right now. Beating our rivalry team Foja, 50 0 best feeling ever. Best feeling ever. Montana class crazy. My my one memory is hearing the student buses come to the stadium. They were so loud. And I remember them driving down Citrus towards the front of Fontana and I could hear them and I was like, oh that, this is gonna be cool. Then they came around the backside and you could really hear them getting loud and you know, just having them show their school pride um, to a school that's so close to us. So that's kind of how I felt and you know, luckily we were able to play really well and to have a good showing. And I think, you know, the first game's always going to build momentum to the first season. Okay, when the bell rings, we're going to try and get all the, all the student body to kind of exit their hallways and come into the middle of campus, what we call our Zeus Lounge, and get the, the teachers there. And we'll have the band there playing so they, they can hear it. We'll have the cheerleaders involved and the football team will do it too. So it's essentially become a mini pep rally. Pre-game routine is, uh, is intense. You know, the setup is ridiculous. There's so many things that go into it, but I would say that um, my favorite part is being able to look at all the young men, um, look into their eyes, see their determination, and be able to just love on them, pray over them. Just so that they're able to stay injury free, stay focused, uh, be men of integrity, and walk with some humility while they're out there playing this game. Arlington was a, they were definitely a bigger challenge than Foja to us. They were more aggressive and more run the ball team. 
but we still came up with the, the win on top. But they were for sure more aggressive than Paul. Mentally, it was all just about a, a battle of like, like you can't break me. Like, I'm gonna make sure I'm, I'm gonna break you before you break me. It feels like every year we've worked harder and harder and harder and harder, and it feels great to see all that work pay off. We've made a stride and made uh, every season since we've been here as coaches. To know that all that work is not going unnoticed, and all that work is paying off, it's, it just makes it worthwhile for sure. Like this last year, um, our coaches put us through a lot during summer to discipline us and to make us better, not go crazy during the, that fourth quarter, you know, last minute, first down. You know. Basically, what King told me was that he's not getting giving anybody numbers until you prove that that's your number. So during the off season, whoever worked the hardest, whoever put in the most work, whoever showed the most dedication, that really want to be there for the championship, earned that number. So, like, so we were playing, competing for that number to like show who you are. And then after that, after you got your number, now we're playing for each other as the season starts. And now we're not playing for a number anymore. We're playing for a championship. We're playing to win. We're playing to keep going on. We're, we're playing for those ten seasons. And then we got to earn six more. Football made me a hard worker. It, it taught me to not take things for granted. And overall, just like if you've never played football and never went through the summer workouts, then there's a lot you're missing out because it just builds character. Football is a very really situational game. So the different situations, it's very emotional as well. So the different emotions that come with it, that's what really keeps you coming back and falling in love with the game. This has helped me work hard, want a lot more. Uh, well, we had a like dream of getting a scholarship. So, you know, when I finally got one, I finally got a full ride off of football, um, and I was really happy because I was I, all four years I worked for that, and I finally got one. Uh, to be honest, I don't think people will ever know what we go through in the summer, and like it's something like you got to come experience for yourself. It's it's meant to break you. It's meant. To, Summer's meant for you to like quit, to make sure like if this is what you really want to do and like those who stick through to the season um, are in for a ride. Some of the ways that I've seen the boys grow going through the football program would probably, one, be their voice changing. <laughs> they all sound like men now instead of squeaky little toys, but uh, they've matured a lot. I mean, they're still the same dorks as always, cracking dumb jokes and you know making fun of me and like wrapping me around. But um, they've just grown and matured so great, and you know I'm just really proud of the accomplishments that they're going through, and that just everything that they're doing is just for the to better themselves and to move on in their lives and to get out of their situations at home or you know trying to become a better person. And I feel like if they didn't have this football program, they'd probably be doing bad in school, not have a job, you know, not be working as hard as they are. And without this football program, I just feel like I wouldn't have as close of a friendship to them as I do now. When I think of football, it's like, it's, it's deep meaning to me because like my whole life I've just been struggling. And once I came into football, I think of family, I think of, all my, all my homies, like Dennis, I think of Gina. I, I just think of the whole football team when I football. And I think of like life lessons because I've learned a lot of life lessons since their football season. I feel like not having that father figure, I feel like my coaches was there for me, you know, through thick and thin. I mean, yeah, sometimes we bump heads, but I think they showed me how to be like that man of just, you know, just being really responsible for everything. And not it, don't make everything as an excuse, make it happen. Watching both head coaches uh, from the time the school opened till Coach Cito's took over. It's been such a difference. Um, just the way that he engages with the athletes, the way that the football coaches in general engage with the athletes. Um, it's been encouraging. Uh, it's been more of a family atmosphere. Uh, there's discipline involved, which is important. You know, and, and I think that's important to understand. You know, there's a difference between punishment and discipline. You know, punishment is when we see something go on and we're getting just screamed on and you know and, and talked about in such a way that you want to that 
that you feel like you want to quit or not be a part of it. Being disciplined is when you're being told what's going on, how you made that mistake, how you need to fix it. There can still be a repercussion. You still may have to run 100, uh, 10 100s to make up for that mistake, but there was discipline involved. You, were, you learned what you did wrong. End up coming in battle. A lot of screaming, <laughs> a lot of, um, just a lot of love, I'd say. You, you feel it before a game when we're all together in the locker room, before we come out, like you just, you, you can feel the energy. You can feel the love that we have for each other right before we go out. And uh, that's a big part of why we won. Like we didn't worry about winning. We just worried about taking care of each other out there on the field. For that week, I felt like the word was redemption because of last year. But that whole week, it was the practice was intense. The level of practice was beyond me. We made sure that week we were practicing at our full capacity. Um, I felt I felt like that was probably the best week of practice we had. If not, it was probably the week of Eisenhower. But it was between those two. But that game, it was truly one for the books because we shut them out. Being a captain overall, like it is the biggest responsibility of your life because you you are the reflection of your team. The way that you act is the way that everybody else is gonna act. The way that you perform is the way that everybody else is gonna perform. You set the standards. So I feel like you have to be your own role model when you're a captain. The main responsibility of being a captain is that don't be selfish, don't get big headed. You know, don't feel yourself, because once you feel yourself, I feel like no one is going to like you at all. Not even the players, if I'm being real with you. Being a captain, it's like, you can't be a hypocrite. You really can't. You can't say, don't do that, and you end up doing that. You have to be on time, and you have to do the workouts, and you just have to really speak up to it as well. And be a, be a leader, not a follower. Leadership, definitely. Picking up your own teammates. Being vocal, communication is a big one. Because if you're not communicating with nobody, then you don't really know. You're really not communicating with them. You're not You're not being a good teammate if you don't communicate. Because communication and everything off the field and on the field. In the class, like, um, like, a, a, like caring. Caring's a big one too. Because if you're just out there for you and not caring about the person next to you, then that's not a good teammate. So having the, these mannerisms and like these type of uh, characteristics like to really make it good to me. I was like, let's go! They wasn't ready for us in Fontana! The shit talking, I seen all the clapping in your face, the talking, your, all that, I seen it all, you know? But we're mentally tough, you know? These coaches, they put us through hell in summer. They put us through hell, like, it's ridiculous. A lot of people quit because of that. But for the ones that stuck around, they're, I know they're mentally tough. They've been through a lot. They're mentally tough. That shit talking, that shit don't get through us. After the loss, uh, I just, honestly, I feel like our season was over. If I'm being really honest with you, I feel like our season was over. We had to like, yeah, I just feel like we're just at the deadline, which is at the bottom. I feel like we were just done, to be honest. But after the loss, it was, it was tough. I remember walking into the locker room, everyone was quiet. And we all cried too. I just I, honestly, I feel like that was a championship game, like a playoff game. I feel like we lost the playoff game, and it got to me too. I wasn't really emotional, but I'm just thinking like, look, practice had to be extremely hard. We had to really be on each other's head. But after that loss, it was a tough one. But I think our guys turned. Around. really frustrating because like you just want to scream and shout at everything and like it, I'm so mad because we're losing we're down I'm trying to talk over here to like what I got to do with my other guys like the guys in the box that I play with and then I'm I'm getting screamed at and then I'm getting screamed at by my coaches too and not just by the players I'm, I'm screaming at them I'm screaming back at the coaches it's, it's hard at those times, but that's, those are the times when you really gotta control yourself the most. To make sure you can handle it. We don't quit. We don't quit. We don't quit. You know, you can't really be 
super low when, you, when you're the head coach, especially when you're the head coach, because everybody's looking at you like, okay, lead us now. You've lost the game. How are you going to respond to the game? So I'm going to be honest with you. I've been coaching high school football since 1999. I feel like this is the year I finally was able to somewhat handle a loss. Um, even though we lost only twice this year, that first loss was still hard, but I just try to focus on the process of, okay, what, what can we learn from that loss? And that's probably the biggest growth I've had as a coach is when we lose games before, I would be like, I don't want to watch the film. I don't want to watch it yet. It's, it's just too, too emotional. It's too close. And so I would, you know, extend that time out as long as I could before our Sunday coaches meeting. Then I would make myself watch it. Well, I'm able to watch it a little sooner, learn from the mistakes, and therefore address the mistakes, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a closer time period, which gives us a better chance to get better from it. That game, it was a, a lot of the underclassmen who realized, like, it was a team effort. Like, we, who realized that we were a lot better than, than they were, if anything, and that we weren't playing to how we usually do, and that we were in our own heads. And it was a team thing, not just as captains, because like, like I was saying, we all motivate each other. And uh, that game, was, even though we were coming back, we came up short. But that game meant a lot to our brotherhood. It defined who we were after that. The perfect time to stay silent and watch the boys is probably right before a kickoff, or when you're in that last few you know, minute or two of your quarter and we're about to make a touchdown. Because everybody always thinks that, you know, make noise, get loud, but you make noise when the other team's going, so that way you throw them off. But when it's our boys, you stay quiet, you let them work together as a team. You know, the second that ball leaves the ground, hype it up. But the second that that ball goes down and our quarterback says set, silence. It's all about the mentality of can, can you see losses as opportunities to get better or can or do you just see losses as some sort of like failure that's attributed to you as a person? So I like to think of it now is how many losses can I endure to be the best coach that I possibly can be? Because that's just the truth. I'm going to lose football games in the future. Nobody can go winning perfect seasons, you know, back to back to back. So how good can I get at overcoming the loss? Will determine my outcome in my career. The mentality was to never taste that again to never have the feeling of a loss again. The trash talking of anything, it only, mo yeah, it makes us mad, but it only motivates us to get louder. Like, okay, you're, ta you're talking down on us, but look, like, we're not gonna let that affect that, like, affect the way that we're performing. Like, we're still gonna try to be as loud as we can because, yeah, like, people are always gonna be talking, like, negative, traveling, wherever it is that we go. But as long as like we show up and we do, like show that this is what we got and we, we can do it, then everything else that people are saying doesn't matter because we know that we did our best. So it's our job to hype up the boys and not the audience. I mean, it's always our job to do that, but it's just easier when we have a bigger crowd. So I guess our main goal for doing that is, you know, just turning around, saying chants over and over and over, especially ones that they like, which is like Mighty B or Get Rowdy or just the ones that they know. Uh, just get them hype as possible. You know, they're right in front of us, so we can cheer them on. And I feel like that's what we do. Sometimes taking a loss can be great because you will learn from that. Well, it was, it was tough coming off this energy loss, um, but I knew that Aurora Valley couldn't compare it to Sanji, and it was going to be an easier game. This year was special because it was the first time we had seen a class from freshman year to senior year. So it has kind of been established already because these kids only knew us as coaches. All the previous kids had other coaches before. So this class was very special when um, we clicked kind of right off the bat because they didn't know any difference. And it was cool to see them just grow up and mature and take a leadership role in the team. 
really embody us as coaches and embody the program, our vision of it. And that's hats off to them for sure. They took a big role and a big leap that no other class had really done here. And we hope they set a good example for everyone else that comes through this program. Being humble in a winning streak, this plays out as well. Like you can't let all all the people telling you, "Oh, congrats!" All this, telling you, all this and that, get into you. Just because, just because you on a seven winning streak, that's not enough. That's not what we wanted. We wanted more. We were hungry. That wasn't good enough. We still didn't have no rings or nothing. Just because we're on a winning streak, you know. As soon as we had a ring, maybe we're able to accept everything else. But once, once we got that ring, till then. I remember last year, my junior year, I didn't get to play that game. And I remember them celebrating. And I was just sitting in the sideline and I was hurt. I remember the guys throwing the helmets, they having a the group dance or whatnot. And I remember before we played last year, well, last year when, they, when we played them at their house, they were celebrating. They were talking about Rupa K, this and that. So this last year, I felt like great. This is a great opportunity. And during the practice, I just knew that we had to go hard, honestly. I mean, all the football, the game, every line, every line counts of the game of football. So I was really hard on my teammates, but yeah, it felt great to get the dub. And honestly, playing that game, I just had to go off. And I felt like I accomplished that throughout the season. I knew Eisenhower didn't think we could beat them, especially after losing to Sanji and them beating Sanji. I knew they thought they had the league championship in the bag and I wanted to go out there and prove them wrong and we did that in a good way. I know several of those coaches on that other side of the ball at Eisenhower for several years. Uh, one of the coaches is a teacher here, you know, and I coach, I worked with him at Aiden Miller High and, you know, you see him walking around like, yeah, we're going to win and, you know, we give each other a hard time all the time. I say, I'm in warrior mode, don't talk to me. We're, you know, we're playing this week, we're playing this week. Don't talk to me, you know. Uh, and to see them win the, the year before and then have him looking at me like, yeah, we won. To be the winner, to be the victor this year was awesome, you know. Um, we outcoached them, I have to say. Uh, we outcoached them. Uh, our boys executed those plays. We won. It felt amazing. It made it a great game because it was competition. At the end of the game, after halftime, we made it to where we were hyped. We had multiple people actually coming up to us and telling us that we're still in it, that nobody's uh, nobody's down. And I've actually scored that game, actually had many yards during that game. When the timer hit zero, it was just so crazy watching the student section go crazy. Like, it was like a movie. I had so much adrenaline in it, for real. And it was the first time we've been league champs ever in the San Andreas League. And it was just crazy, like crazy experience. It was like straight out of a movie. I believe that we were traje we, our trajectory was going to go that far. There was a difference. Uh, there was a difference in the work ethic. There was a difference in the absorption of information. Um, there was a, there was a difference in accountability. I just felt it. You just, you just sometimes you can just feel it, you know. And uh, I expected a ring. <laughs> if I can be transparent, uh, I expected a ring this year because of those components that they brought to the table, you know. And um, I'm proud of what they were able to accomplish. Very proud of what you were able to accomplish this year. When you're an underdog, it's a little bit easier. A lot of people don't think about this, but when you're the underdog as a coach, you can use that to motivate your team. And your team is going to be motivated. The key thing is, can you allow them to be confident? And I thought we did a good job. Of, uh, I thought our mentality was right. At that point, we needed to challenge them and say, hey, we've had a lot of success, but no one's going to give it to you. We have to make sure that day in, day out, we're preparing like we're the worst team in America. We have to prove something every week. And no one's ever going to lay down and try to give us something. We have to go take it. So that was the big mentality that week, for sure. And once again, we kind of came through. So it's, the trend is starting to build throughout the season. With the playoff game being my first playoff game against a 
Coachella Valley. Yeah, there was some pressure, a lot of pressure. I just felt like I wasn't quite ready. I didn't want to show it, but I felt like I wasn't ready. But I just knew that my actions had to be there mentally and physically. No losses all the way through. That's a perfect season, by definition. Uh, perfect season also is not losing your players. Not losing your players because they didn't do anything wrong in class. They didn't do anything wrong um, with their behavior and discipline issues that you have every young man that you started with. You have every young man that you went to battle with all the way to the end. It's a perfect season. The daily life of being a student athlete, that, that's pretty hard. Because, like, yeah, that's that's very tough. I mean, you got practice, start from four, it ends at seven. I don't get home. Usually at the time, I didn't get home until, like, eight. So that was very hard. And within that, you, know, you got to eat, you got to shower, your homework. You got to get up, and it just repeats itself over and over. So that's pretty much how it is, to be honest. And schoolwork, too, that's really important. Leave that out. Sportsmanship on and off the field is extremely important. It's not only what you do on the field, it's what you do in the classroom, what you do around your peers. Uh, the biggest struggle in any sport, I would say, is the best athletes don't always make the best grades. So, you know, you can have a good athlete who is amazing on the field, who, who gets their workouts done, who sets records, but doesn't make it in the classroom because they need to cut, you know what I mean? Or has behavioral issues or gets into fight constantly. And, you know, the difference between a good and a great athlete would be, you know, great athlete goes on the field, they stay quiet, they keep that competitive mode and they're quiet, you know, they do their work. And then they get over here to school and they do their work, they get A's and B's, you know, they're constantly on top of their own things, they're responsible, they're respectful, and you know, you gain a reputation of the type of person that you are. If you're an athlete and you have amazing sportsmanship on and off the field, everybody will commend you for that. And, you know, same thing with me, you know, not only do I do cheer, I do other sports, and with those other sports, you know, you grow a reputation with your coaches. Your coaches know you better than anybody else because you know, they're with you through the grind. They're with you when you're in pain. They're with you when you see that you're when they see that you're having a bad day. It's really important to just be in game mode 24/7 because you never know who's watching. You can be in this, you know, on the field out of practice, and a recruiter will be in the team and say, you know, you get into it with somebody. It's like, oh, do I really want them? And so. Uh, Sportsmanship has always been a really, really big thing in my head. If I see one of the girls arguing, I'm like, knock it off. Like, you guys are setting an example for your coach. When you've had so much success, it's it's human nature to kind of take a sit back and try to kind of go through the motions. But I give it all to our head coach, Coach Cito. So he, he strives for greatness no matter what. He's always pushing us as coaches. So when we get that mentality instilled in us, it comes second nature as adults, we're a little bit more mature. We can handle it a little bit better, but the kids picked it up really well. I think with past success and having past failures, they really knew like, okay, well, we've had success before, but we always let it slip through our hands, so to speak. So let's not let it happen this time. What do we need to do to get better? How can we continue to push ourselves? Just the questions we kept repeatedly asking over and over until we figured it out. Devastated, you know. Everyone wants to win the league title with a flawless victory. No one wants to have won that one loss on there. When you have a rolling season like we were having and playing well together and really fostering that family dynamic on and off the field, you know, you expect that that win, that, that extra victory and that league title. Um, and making that playoff run that much more important. Like, yeah, we won, and we're going to win that, you know. And um, it was probably a really quiet ride back.
during the Almonte game, it was a really intense game. The first, the first two, the first two quarters, they had a really good, supposed to be good running back. Their offense was really, it was different. It was a different offense that we've seen completely all year. You know, we had to adjust to it. At first, you know, adjusting to a completely new offense was going to be a little bit of mistakes here and there. But as the game progressed, just by playing football, you naturally get used to it. You naturally see what the person in front of you is going to do. You know. You kind of get used to the way they, they start running their offense. But over during halftime, I think it was 60-50. Even though it was a really, we were in the lead, and they were only in the lead by one point, I still had to like try to motivate my brothers and all of them to like, you know, we were this close, we just got another another 60 minutes to play or another 30 minutes to play. I mean, that's it, we just got to finish the game, that's it. You know? It was just, it was just, the motivation was just to finish strong. When the clock hit zero, so much was going through my head. I wanted these boys to win the season. Like I really wanted that with all my heart. So it was really hard to see like them breaking down after the game. And it also hit me that that was my last football game since I'm a senior. And it was kind of really tragic to have the game end up that way, especially with everything going on like throughout the game. The world just like literally slowed down as soon as clock hit zero. It felt like the ride home took forever. I really didn't feel anybody was quitting. Uh, I knew, I felt, Everybody was fighting. Everyone knew we were fighting. It was a dog fight on the field. Um, we were fighting when they were fighting hard, back hard too. Um, everybody was highly motivated. We were mad, if anything, because we knew we should have been playing a lot better. The online game was extremely stressful and uh, very heartbreaking. Um, you know, that was my parents' old high school. So that's my parents are alumni from there. And it was like, we were always cracking jokes, like, what side are you going to sit on? You know, who are you going to be a part of? But, you know, after seeing the way that, you know, their crowd outside of the stands was acting, you know, it was really hard to depict if that's where, you know, their heart, where my parents' heart was at for their team. And so, you know, my parents know all these boys. Some of these boys call my, par call my parents mom or dad. Like, that's how... That's how it is, and um, you know, feeling the disrespect from the other team. You know, not to bash Almani because the people, the student body, the cheerleaders, the people in the stands were amazing. It was about what was going on outside of the stands and outside of the school. Um, it was really hard being called names and you know being told to go home or like you suck. And you know, not only did it affect the cheerleaders, but it affected our boys because it's not like it's not like we're two separate teams. Yes, we do two separate things, but we work together and we are, you know, a separate family, I guess you could say, but we're always there for each other. And not everybody knows everybody, but we all share feelings and we know how to protect each other. And so it was really disappointing to see how adults were acting towards, you know, students and, you know, it was really immature. But I feel like my team handle it, handled it very well and I am extremely proud to call them my team because it's really hard not to bite back when somebody's barking so hard. It made us feel that we put in hard work. We wanted this game so bad. We only knew that they had certain plays. During that touchdown when they scored, we knew that we had to come back. We made a big play all the way down and then fumbled on the one yard line. Uh, I feel like I could have done better. I ended up getting hurt a little bit, so my back was messed up. So I feel like everybody kind of let everybody down because I could have done better without them. Everybody at the end of the game was just crying, and I told them, just keep your heads up. We got, we got next season. We got to put in hard work for that. And we're going to come back. To be real, and I feel like most of the senior class agrees with me on this, but none of us didn't expect us to go this far. Like, we, we expect at least the first round, maybe the second round. But as far as, like, we got really deep this season, you know? A lot of us didn't expect it that much. As soon as we realized we were this close from the ring, it just changed, you know? But a lot of us didn't expect us to get this far, but we did. We pulled it off. We've gone back and forth. I speak to my husband all the time. He's a football coach as well. Like, what would you have done? Would you have, like, give a timeout to tell them that that El Monte game turned into a championship game at that moment? Would you play it out like you did and then tell them at the end? Like, what would you do? And it's like, both of us, are like right in the middle saying, I don't know if I would say, I don't know if I should say, maybe we should say, maybe we shouldn't say. And uh, we really couldn't like teeter on either side of those answers. And um, I just I just know that when I knew that he turned into the championship game, probably about the top of third quarter, 
I just knew that I was ready to suit up and play. And if I was that excited to play, that if they knew, they would want to play even harder. So that's just me uh, and how I felt um, the uh, football player inside of me, the secret one. <laughs> After we had lost, I had found out. And that only made it, the feeling of losing even that much worse, knowing that you played in the championship game and came that close, literally inches away from scoring and tying the game. So close yet so far. We all could have had it. It would have been a great surprise. I mean, I congratulate Monte for having it. I'll say a lot of the underclassmen, it affected them more, maturing them, because they're so used to winning. Like us, a senior class, we come from a four and six season our freshman year. And this year, the freshman class just came off nine and one, and the class before that, nine and one. You know, each time I stepped into that field, I just knew, I just knew I could just show out and just ball out. Cause I knew this was going to be my last. My final year, we never lost at home. And if it's your final year, you, never, you better not lose at home either. I felt pretty amazing to show talent that uh, most people, they might not know how good you are, then you can show it on the field. It feels good to come back, actually. You get talked about when you come back to school on that Monday, to talk about how the game was, how how did you do, how good you were. Words to my student body about supporting us would probably be, you know, you guys asked for school spirit, and you are the school spirit. So, you know, you want a good game? Come watch a good game. Come support us. You know, the more the more energy you give the cheerleaders and the football players, the more energy we give back. So, you know, if you guys are up and dancing, we're up and dancing. If you're cheering hard, we're cheering hard. Our boys are going to play harder. You know, it's like a domino effect. It goes student body, cheerleaders, football players. Without the student body, where's the spirit? We like being underdogs. We don't have anything to lose. We really don't. You're supposed to lose, so why not go shock the world? So with that shock the world mentality, I think it helped us, honestly. I don't know if we were, the season would have went the same if we were projected. Why did I come to this school? Because Miss Braun really cares about football. So I wanted to be around somebody that cares about football. And now that our administration cares about football um, like that, and then our district, you know, really loves football. That's the other thing that brought me to this school is Fontana has a history of football. You know, Fontana football is something that is that rings out that people know about. They've won national championships. They they are a powerhouse and. Every school in our district has won a CIF championship except for Miller. And that that's because of the culture here. And so I'm glad that I get to be a part of, it's a privilege to be a part of that culture. And we take that privilege with a tremendous amount of pride in continuing to build that legacy. Uh, man, Miss Levante is really cool, man. Uh, I love her. She's, I, a lot of people appreciate her for what she does. And, her bringing him out of his school, we appreciate that. To realizing the fact that she brought a superintendent to come watch us play, it just show you how much how much we were out there, you know? Like we were we we're being really watched by some people of the high class. It was, just, it was a good experience too, because the body count that game, it was, it was ridiculous. The, the energy, it was felt on the field. We were able to hear it, and we just played better because of that. The class of 2020 pushed the program up basically as high as you can be without winning the championship. So the class of 2021 and the future classes have that challenge of getting us over the hump. <laughs> Been coaching for a really long time, guys. Really long time. And one of my goals this year was to win 10 games. 
Winning 10 games is a very difficult thing. It's very special, all right? And you guys got that now, all right? Give yourself a round of applause for being 10. They definitely left an imprint on what is to be expected of them. Um, the arrow that's left is that next step of the championship, okay? So now that we've gotten all the way to the semifinal, where are you gonna take us? Are you gonna take us to the CIF championship? Are you gonna take us to the regional championship? Are you gonna take us to the state? Let us know.